everyone, Mr. Merkage here, and today I've got part two of the new auto updating application. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to actually implement a bit of code into your main application uh, so you can download the new auto updating one, which will take care of the updating process for you. So, uh, this is a new project, this will be the main project which I want to update, but you don't have to make this project. Um, this this would be your actual application which you want to implement the update into so let's say you had a skype tool this would be you want to, you would want to have your skype tool source open uh, so what you want to do is you want to go into the load form load sub again and as soon as the tool is open you want to execute a function which will say check updates like that and we want to create that function now so we can say public sub oops public sub check updates and inside here to save me a bit of time because I made an updating video in the past I've actually just copied a bit of code here uh, but I will have this in the description for you to save you typing it out too but I will explain how it works now what it's going to do is create a request to a link which is actually going to be a Dropbox link and then if it's going to be a different version then it's going to download the new exe so what we want to do is actually go into uh, Dropbox because we're going to be using that we want to create a new text document and inside here we can just call this update num short for number and inside here we want to have the version number so if you have not watched my previous updating video uh, you probably want to watch that um, it could be a bit useful for helping this if you've not watched that yet now this is the version number of the application uh, we can shut that down and we want to share the Dropbox link or copy it and that will copy it for us and we want to paste it in here and change the little zero at the end to a one so it will check it properly uh, so what that's going to do is connect to our link see that it has 1.0.0.0 and if that number if you go to project and properties uh, and go to assembly information you'll see 1.0.0.0 like so so if you create a new update you'd want that to be let's say 2 and 2 here and that will trigger the update to happen so back into the code uh, if there is uh, a new version we want to download it so previously I showed you here how we downloaded it so we want to do the same thing to the uh, directory so let's copy uh, this like that and put that there but again we're gonna to have to create a few things so dim w client as new system dot net dot web client and we'll also want the directory path in path as a string and that'll be equal to my dot application dot info dot directory path and also dim tool as a string equals to directory path and so we'll have that there for now we'll have to change this because it's just placeholders so what's going to happen is we'll change that to shorten that because I changed that what we want to do is download the auto update file so what we actually need to do is go into the updater and we want to build it and once we've built that we can come into the debug folder of it and we just want to copy that and place it in our Dropbox folder so we can paste that in like that and that's going to generate our link when that's updated so we want to copy that link and this will be our updater now so what we want to do is go into the actual application and we want to download this updater and we want to put that 0 to a 1 again uh, and except this is going to be called well I, in my case I called it YouTube auto 
update.exe. So if we come up here, I called that uh, IT auto update. Now you'd want to call that whatever you called your project or your application name. So that's going to download that for me into our directory path. And once that has actually downloaded, uh, we want to have a timer again just to give it a bit of time to download. So let me just create that. Uh, there's a timer. Give that again 10 seconds. And inside this code, once it's done, we want to process dot start and we want to launch that that file so we can actually copy that because we want the directory path and that so process.start and we want to launch the file we just downloaded in 10 seconds after downloading it that's pretty much what that's doing for us and uh, also we want to shut this application because it needs to be shut for this one to work although we got to check in that for it to shut it anyway so either way you don't need that but it's best to have it um, so that'll be your main application so if I was to open that it would actually not update because obviously the ones the version numbers match so if I wanted to trigger an update what I'll do is go into here update number uh, edit that and change this number to a 2 just so the numbers don't match anymore and now if I were to open that it will take care and it will download the file for me and if we give this 10 seconds it should shut so let's give this 10 seconds there we go it's shut actually gave us an error the format of the URI could not be determined continue um, it must have worked because it's opened our update one anyway I'm not quite sure what that error was but if we go into the folder of uh, what did I call it projects main bug you'll see that it did actually download this is our main project but it did actually download the file here which is the one we created for the update it's kinda confusing I know but if you can understand it then it's it's actually a good method of updating projects so now with that's working it, we checked updates and it's getting the new program but we need to go back into the original one that I showed you and now we need to take care of the new file so we we pulled that YouTube update uh, no YouTube auto update main I called it main so now we'd want to check if that's open it's called yt auto update main so now we know the name of that file um, so let's go in here and we need the so let's go back into here because what we need to do now to prove that it's an updater I'll just show you something so if we add a label and I'll just call this new update if I actually build this project uh, you might not understand what I'm doing now but I'll explain it so if I refresh that this is our new version I just quickly made if I copy that paste it into our Dropbox now what I want to actually do is remove this so it seems like an old update but the new ones inside that folder now what I'm gonna do is build this now so it looks like an old one uh, go into Dropbox copy the link for this one come into our updating project and we want to paste that link there change the 0 to a 1 call that YT auto update main make sure the spelling is correct otherwise this will not work um, and obviously we want to do the same on this line 0 to a 1 and call that yt auto update main like that 
and obviously we'd want to start it so it's uh, yt auto update main I have made this a little bit confusing if you are confused I am really sorry um, but it is kind of a long process and I've confused myself a bit as well by calling it the same um, but hopefully it should be alright so if we open this up uh, no, actually we need to save that build it because now this has the correct code we want to uh, actually get that and put that in our Dropbox because it, now it's going to download the full working one for us so we can copy that uh, put that into Dropbox and replace it like that and now in all f theory this should work so if I was to launch this what it should do is it should download we can look inside the folder it's deleted actually we're in the wrong folder let me go back into it so yeah so we got that error again I'm not quite sure why that is um, it says it's in it already used in another process but I believe that's because we got Visual Studio open so that shouldn't happen you can see it downloaded the update file here and then it downloaded the new update which I just created here from the Dropbox and it's got an error just because Visual Studio is open and it's going to be inside a loop but yeah uh, hopefully you got the understanding of that and obviously we would want to get rid of this file so in the main when this is launched if uh, when it gets relaunched you basically want to check if that exists and delete the file so uh, you can say if system .io .file .exists, um tool and system .io .file .delete tool so if we open this up and it exists we'll just delete it because we want to get rid of it after we've used it so that is it that will be working um, I know I might have confused the hell out of you I am pretty sorry but it does work um, I will go over what we just did so this will be your project inside form load we are checking if the file exists because that will be after we've used it anyway so that will come after in the end if it does exist we'll just delete it get rid of the auto updater um, we're checking for the updates we're checking for the version number um, which is 1.0.0.0 but you want to change that if there's an update and also if there is an update we're downloading the auto updater now if, if the auto update is downloaded we're going to launch it and now if we go back into that program when that gets launched it's checking getting the update and then downloading the new one and obviously launching the new one so it is pretty simple but the code is pretty confusing um, hopefully you understand what I did I might have gone a bit too fast for you but I'm sorry about that but Hopefully you did enjoy the video and you got yourself a new auto updater. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time.